So let's move to the third part, right? Now mm, we move away from just ourselves and we open up to the rest of the world. Um, and again, some of you I know may not feel entirely ready for this, or you may not feel ready to do so other than your most in intimate circle, and that's fine. We wanted to leave you with this idea though, because um, first of all, I think it's important to consider us being here in this world for something beyond, mm, perhaps beyond just our own pleasure, right? And our own achievement. And also to consider the idea that it's actually quite easy to contribute value to others. And here's, we're gonna talk a, a couple of ways of how. So creating a sense of community, collaboration, connectedness is ultimately about reaching out. It's about responding and supporting others. And it's about this concept of serving, which is not subservient. It's not being lesser than people. It's about adding value in a way that makes sense for you. But doing so while respecting your own needs and limits, you know, regularly sense checking your commitments and your relationships as we spoke to see, do they still serve you? Does this feel fair? Does this inspire you and make you feel good versus kind of bring you down? And also being strategic and thoughtful about how we choose to go about it. One thing is doing and offering something for free, which I think is great when it's done in a way that you can sustain yourself, right? But being prey to people who will take advantage of you and your skills in a way that um, under, you know, undervalues you or takes advantage of you, that's not okay, right? So st strategic mindset is not about being just self-serving. Some people, I think, think about it in that respect. It's about creating, as we say, your intelligently designed how. How are you going to do something? So you can either just launch into it, or you can take a few moments, as we spoke about in some of the previous sessions, reflect and think, wait, what is the best way to go about this? Who do I contact? What do I need to sense check? Right? How much can I give? And we'll talk a little bit more about other things to consider. Uh, for those of you sci-fi freakies, science fiction freaks like myself, um, I do have to recommend to you that there's a wonderful Star Trek series that just came out. And I do believe it's possibly the best. Some people might hate me for saying that, but it's wonderful. It's the new Picard series. It's, you know, Captain Picard, Jean-Luc Picard is elderly, brilliant as ever. And it's a sci-fi um, series, but at the same time, it's incredibly wise about the way that his relationships evolve and the things that he has to deal with, uh, reflect on, um, and it's a great, wonderful acting. But anyway, I'm not here to plug the show. He does say one thing, which I thought was marvelous. Um, he says to be alive is both a responsibility as well as a right. And I think this is so true, right? So many people go through their lives passively um, swallowing whatever life gives them. They don't see it as an opportunity. They don't see it as the gift that it is. You know, they don't cherish what they have around them. And I think in this respect, understanding that life is also responsibility is not about obligation. It's about understanding that, that given that gift, there's so much we can give back to it um, and with it. And it's just something to contemplate. The question then here becomes for us, what connections and initiatives are valuable to you now and in the future that you wanna nurture, right? What do you wanna get behind, as we said? And the objective here is organize, contribute, and participate in what makes sense for you again now and in the long term. Because you need to keep recharging your batteries, you need to keep feeling inspired now. Some of those things will only serve you now. But some things also, whether you get involved with them right now or you're looking to get involved in the future, the things that are gonna keep you going going forward, right? And so this is also about not just our own, again, motivation and perseverance, but contributing to this kind of sense of greater good. And how do you do this then? One thing is list your strengths, list your core experiences, your values, your priorities, all this work that we have been talking about in these sessions and clarify, right, what you can and what you want to contribute to. And, you know, uh, my clients and my, my loved ones always laugh because I'm always like, you know, do a list. And they're like, oh, another list, another homework? Yes, but it's so easy to do. Just write in detail, right? When you've established your priorities and your concept of success first, as we talked previously, is, you know, what are those things you can offer to others that right now are of particular value and will be of particular value going forward? The second part of this is then, you know, research and list the people and initiatives that are inspiring you, right? Again, that will inspire you now and inspire you going forward, but you want to connect with. 
look at them, right? And, and consider also your time, also your limits and all that, but consider where uh, joining them will also be a great source of strength or inspiration um, or richness for you. David Hawkins uh, says something really interesting. He says, every act or decision we make that supports life, supports all life, including our own. And I think it's such a marvelous statement. This idea that, um, and it's so against this scarcity mindset of if I help myself, right, I don't have time for others. Or this idea that if I'm giving something to someone else, I'm giving off, I'm giving, I'm taking away from myself, right? Well, if you're doing that in relationships and situations that are destructive to you, or that don't respect you, then yes. But when you're looking for what we call mutually beneficial relationships, mutually beneficial dynamics, then as you support that, you support yourself, right? And there's a wonderful line in, in Brene Brown's um, beautiful short book that I really recommend, The Art of Imperfection. And she says, you know, the most truly compassionate people are people who first take care of themselves because then everything they give, they can truly give unconditionally because they know that they're taking care of themselves and they're not putting themselves at risk. And I think this is marvelous. It's a beautiful way of saying, when you take care of yourself first, then what you give, you can truly give willingly and trustingly and lovingly. And I think this is a wonderful balance that maybe sometimes is difficult for all of us to reach but it's something really beautiful to strive towards. The idea then once you've identified in more detail your strengths, your values, your experiences that can be of value to others as well, those others, initiatives and people that you, know, you wanna get behind and support, then create a strategy around that, right? How do you wanna go about it? Again, it's your intelligently designed how. Look at the best ways to connect. Look at key questions you wanna ask them. Remember that quality questions are not just about actually getting really important information and clarification around things that are critical and understanding whether you wanna get involved with someone or something and building that relationship, but they also show interest in the other person and what they're doing, right? When you ask someone how you're feeling or what's important to you, you're showing that you care about their perspective and that you're not just in it for yourself and hopefully that's the case, right? The other things to consider in your strategy is, again, not just the value you can add, but also consider the value that you're gonna get in return. Um, it's not that we do everything self in, with self-interest, no, but again, this is about helping us troubleshoot what situations are we getting involved in where we just keep giving and we get exhausted because people keep taking in a way that um, you know, just takes away from us. Now, there are situations with people you have to take care of, family, children, where yes, it's exhausting, but that's the nature of the relationship, right? Even then there are boundaries that can be created. But particularly in this case, we're really talking about reaching out to others to whom you don't have any sort of responsibility and obligation. And so in that sense, it's absolutely correct to question, you know, really how is this also gonna be a benefit and a joy for me? Practice and create your story. Your story is kind of an extended version of what you know, you've heard of your pitch, the elevator pitch. It's kind of quickly saying who you are, what you do, for whom, and what's special about it. Well, your story imagines an extended version. When you've done all these things that we've said, you know, you weave into a couple of paragraphs your core, you know, um, your core values, your core strengths again, your key experiences, but anything that you really think that other people should know that has been part of, you know, creating you into the person that you are and being able to offer the offer, the, the value that you can, right? So you weave that into a, a true story, um, focusing on only the most important things. And obviously, you know, you can shift this and vary this depending on who your audience is, as long as it's true, you know, true and authentic. What happens here then is um, when you integrate the story, when you really localize and identify and clarify, really, what have been the core things that make me up, knowing that that can shift. But for right now, who am I and what can I offer? It becomes that much easier, that much more beautiful, that much more um, effective in being able to communicate that to others. I'm sure you've all been uh, in this situation where you're having you know, a wonderful talk with someone, a conversation, however brief, um, and when they ask you, so what are you about? You know, your mind goes blank or you, you think of 35 million things you want to say, but none of them really seem to send across a clear and effective message. 
right? So this helps avoid that. And again, just like anything else, it's a little bit of work. What's also beautiful about creating and practicing your story, which you can do in front of the mirror, you can do talking to your cat or your dog as you can talk to, you know, um, your plants or with your friends. But the other really great thing is that as you also practice it meeting other people, um, it becomes more and more natural. And the idea is not to create a soliloquy or a monologue here, not at all. It's just that when you have that story so internalized here, so well known, you can continue to shift it, but you can also throw in little smidgens in different places. As you're having a conversation with someone, it's not that you suddenly launch, hi, I'm Nev and I'm an international blah, 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 right? It's more that, you know, they say something and it triggers, oh, well, I actually love gardening too. Here's what we did the other season. Maybe that would be interesting, you know, to you. Or you're also doing university work. How cool, right? What kind of things are you teaching? Here's the stuff that I've done, right? It makes it that much easier for you to also hone in on the things that you may have in common with a person where you can find that kind of shared compatibility. There's a lot more to say on this and we'll probably do more sessions in the future about it, but this is a good way to start. Just start writing out paragraphs or what I like to do preferably is not actually write full sentences, sentences, but do bullets of the most important things I wanna say by category and then just see what flows out, right? The world should know your value and the best way that we communicate that value is oftentimes speaking it, right? And presenting it. So make sure that that um, corresponds to all the richness you have inside to offer. The other thing is, you know, create this networking strategy. We talked about, you know, really identifying the, the initiatives and the people that you'd like to contribute to. Now really put it to paper. And what I mean by that is, you know, imagine getting to five to 10 people and or initiatives and behind every initiative is a point person. So make sure it comes down to people that you want to connect with or cultivate a relationship with, let's say over the next six months. Now, some of these, you may be mistaken. Maybe you contact them and you realize, oh, it's not what I thought, or it's not that valuable or whatever, or they don't respond. That's okay. We all get to start somewhere, but you'll be surprised. Other people, especially at a time like this, when they're looking to connect um, and they're looking to feel a sense of community, it's probably one of the most amazing moments to do that. And so what do you do? Well, make a list, right? Come up with these people, but not too many. Think about what's valuable to them, research them a little bit, see what they seem to be about and what their story is. Look at some of the things you may have in common, identify that. Think about the best way to contact them. Think about the best way you'd like to develop the relationship. Think about things that you can offer them, um, even if it's just a, a small resource or, or who knows. Think about some questions you can ask them and ways to follow up. And just a couple of questions if you answer for each one of these. If you're interested, send us an email at nev at nevcoaching.com and I'll send you the tool that we have specifically around this to help you. And when you have this, you just leave it on your desk. It just allows you to, again, instead of constantly circling these things in your head, have a very clear direction of, hey, what's interesting for me and who do I wanna be connected with or at least see if there's some mutual benefit going forward. I had a student of mine in the master's program the other day say to me particularly that, you know, and I think I may have mentioned this to you that she just was feeling lonely and off and, and unmotivated. And it, so she left aside some of her academic work and she said, what do I really feel like right now? And she said, I want to connect. And she did this whole thing by herself. She came up exactly with a list and tailored very specific little emails to each person around the things they thought would be interesting for them. But very brief, everybody responded. She was so impressed, but you know, I think the key here is to personalize it, right? We're not mass emailing, we're not disrespecting other people, we're not demanding anything or asking first. We're just trying to open up that bridge of contact and see what comes out. There's a really wonderful um, entrepreneur, she's a famous online entrepreneur in Itty Biz, and, and Itty Biz is the name of her business, and she said something in one of her blogs a long time ago, I, I will never forget, she said, you know, if I had to do it all over again, because she's very successful. She said, I would just meet people and talk about like dogs and babies and, you know, other things like that, gardening. We're so, so set on every time we meet someone giving these pitches, you know, competing to present ourselves over each other. Nobody's listening. Then we've got initiatives like, you know, fast speed networking, which just makes people more anxious. People throw cards at each other and don't remember anything because then you end up being a number to them and they're a number to you. The best thing when it comes to this kind of work, and we'll do a lot more um, content on networking going forward, but is, you know, just have a meaningful conversation. It's better to have a connection with five, 10 minutes or a few emails where you talk about something real 
something that you've taken the time to really see could be of advantage to that person and not muscle in asking from the beginning. These things make a huge difference to just, again, open up that gate. The other thing is, you know, as we said before, just be open to the different ways that you can work together, not just ways that your own initiatives might work for you, but also sometimes the way that contacts and opportunities through people can appear. I had some of the most amazing, I mean, new jobs, promotions um, to new companies, clients come through the most unsuspecting situations where all it took was a little bit of courage to approach a speaker after an event where nobody else wanted to do it, um, or you know, just a, a little bit of, of time saying yes to maybe a dinner over something personal and being willing to ask someone a question or get interested for the moment in what they're about. Um, the idea here is that people are people, no matter you know, who they are or what their position is. And so when we treat people, when we see people and we treat them with, with respect and kindness, they remember that. As long as, of course, it's not used as a gimmick, but it's used as um, a genuine uh, connection and, and interest in humanity. The last thing I want to tell you in this section is, you know, just also please be open about judgment. We're all stressed and we're all exhausted with this situation. And we said at the beginning of this series that, you know, yes, we are all in the same boat in terms of general circumstances with this quarantine. But we are in very different boats in terms of specific circumstances, right? For example, we've said already, you know, the, the incredible strain, um, the things that people are seeing on the front lines, both in the medical industry and others, people who themselves have been sick or have had loved ones be very ill or even pass away due to the situation, completely different experience. People who are on the one hand working like crazy or possibly even exhausted and stressed versus those who are sitting at home and have been laid off or are frightened for their future or how they're gonna make ends meet. And then also the difference between you know, children, children who even at different stages of development are struggling with certain things due to this. Some are loving having their parents home, but others are deeply disturbed and probably also feel that stress all around. Um, then we also have the difference with elderly folks, you know, elderly folks, particularly if they've been through a lot of difficulty in their own lives or have even witnessed great crises like wars, um, being in a particular stage in their own lives may take a perspective on this that's different. So when you're connecting with people, just try and keep that open mind. If there are people that you just feel like you cannot continue connecting with on a regular basis, that's fine. You know, gravitate to those who do enrich you, but you don't have to necessarily um, rail against or criticize or judge others, just let them be on their own, right? The idea here is that we may find a lot of differing experiences, um, a lot of different, uh, differing emotions within our own families, within our own companies, within our own teams. And since those are not people that you're just going to forget about, the question is then how do we live in peace, respecting each other's unique experience around this? Um, try and still bridge some sense of connectedness, but in a way that doesn't drain us. We'll give you more on this in some future sessions. So that's what I got for you, but I'm going to leave you with one of my favorite quotes in the world, which is by the very famous philosopher Alan Watts. He says, the meaning of life is just to be alive. It is so plain and so obvious and so simple, and yet everybody rushes around in a great panic as if it were necessary to achieve something beyond themselves. I think this is marvelous, right? And it goes with anyone's beliefs, right? It doesn't matter whether you're religious, spiritual or not. The idea is everything we've been talking about in this such as, as we said before, was very much about, you know, learning new concepts, but really repeating and showing different ways of applying some core practices in different elements of your life because it's the work, it's the work that creates change, right? But all this work we're talking about, folks, it's just about you living the most precious, beautiful life that, you know, as you define it, and that's it. When you feel centered and connected with that, then you can be there for others, then you can serve in ways, then you can, you know, find more ease. And it's not that any of us are living in this perfect Zen of that, but the closer you get to that, the easier things become, particularly in moments of difficulty. So that's what I got for you today. Um, thank you so much for 
sharing these moments with us. Um, also, big thank you to those, of, uh, to those folks who've been watching the videos, both in Spanish and English, and the wonderful comments we've been getting from people all over the world, which has really helped us also keep creating content that I hope has been of service to you. Well, this is the end of the first edition of the We Are One sessions. We're definitely going to continue. We're going back to our creative boards as we say it. Um, and we're going to be creating a lot more content, in this case, still about personal and professional development, but also very much about uh, the other part of our work, which is um, developing companies and developing teams, high performing teams. So that's the other half of our specialty. And I think now that the world is moving more again towards um, new projects, work and kind of um, pushing forward with this crisis, these are now going to be also very relevant. So what we're probably gonna do is also do a lot shorter videos so that it becomes easier for you to consume, but we will continue occasionally to do some live calls. So I hope you'll join us there. We have a YouTube channel, who knew? I never thought I'd be on YouTube, but here we are. So I gotta tell you that because that's where you'll find all the other videos. And if you find this helpful, um, what my beautiful team, Monica and Fernanda are doing is they're also chopping up little bits out of these videos so that you can find little shorts on very specific topics. Um, and you can also watch the full sessions. So feel free to share them, leave us a comment, but subscribe more than anything because this is what allows us to keep creating more content. And as well, another channel for us is to go to nevcoaching.com on the English version. At the bottom of the homepage, you can subscribe to our blogs and our special invites for different events that we do. Obviously, YouTube is about videos, but we anything else we have, we do through our core community of, of Nev Coaching Consulting, beautiful, wonderful people that we adore, right? And there's a lot of stuff, resources that we do there um, that we offer. Many are free or heavily discounted, but certainly at a great value. So join us there as well. And, um, and thank you again. Questions, comments, Strategies for your own future. I'll give you again some of the questions, right? What inspires hope and strengthens your courage now and going forward? What vision and resources will keep you moving and moving thoughtfully, strategically? And what connections and initiatives are valuable to you now and in the future that you want to nurture? 